Hello, this is Clemmy Games and welcome to episode 1 of My Gaming History, the series where you can learn more about me and the games that have shaped my preferences and perspective with regards to gaming today. In this episode, we will be looking at Heroes of Might and Magic, a strategic quest, or simply Heroes of Might and Magic 1, abbreviated to HOMM1, a turn-based strategy game with overworld exploration and base building. This particular title was developed by New World Computing and was released on PC in 1995. The series is closely linked with and do share similar gameplay elements to the King's Bounty series of games. Furthermore, HOMM games are also not to be confused with the Might and Magic series of role-playing games which were developed by the same company. In HOMM1, the general gameplay involves the direct control of a hero unit on the world map, with various treasures and resources to collect and enemies to encounter. Each hero has a limited amount of movement points per turn, and deciding where to go and what to do is the crux of the strategic component here. If you do get into a battle, the perspective shifts to a side-on view where turn-based combat then occurs. Here, heroes do not directly participate in combat. Rather, you command armies of troops and creatures to do battle for you. There are three main types of units, melee, ranged, and flying. Each unique creature is grouped into a single stack, and the strategy component comes into play due to differences in troop statistics such as attack, defense, and movement speed. Furthermore, your hero can cast spells to influence the battle, and there are also role-playing components as your hero has statistics such as attack and defense, which would affect the troops under his or her command. HOMM1 has a unique resource system, which involves capturing or claiming resource production nodes, such as sawmills for wood or crystal mines for crystals. These resources are then used in the construction of your castle and in the hiring of troops. When you complete all your actions for the day, you have to click the Enter button, which also signifies the passing of one in-game day. At the beginning of each day, your hero's movement points are restored, you get resources for each mine you control, and you are then able to build an additional structure in your castle again. At the end of each in-game week or 7 turns, more creatures will then be available for hire from the creature dwellings in your castle. As time goes by, you accumulate a greater number of creatures, which makes your army more powerful. The victory condition usually involves the extermination of all enemy players by taking over their castles and killing their heroes. Finally, I want to talk about the factions in the game. For me, one of the joys of this game is to discover the unique creatures of each faction, learning about their characteristics and how best to use them in combat. In HOMM1, factions are not explicitly named, so I will simply go with the hero types for them. We have the Knight, Barbarian, Sorceress, and Warlock. Troops include Pikemen and Archers for the Knight, Goblins and Trolls for the Barbarian, Elves and Unicorns for the Sorceress, and Hydras and Dragons for the Warlock. While there are some fantasy tropes here, the factions do feel unique and balanced and are therefore interesting and fun to play as. For my own personal experience with HOMM1, I do recall spending a ton of time simply playing skirmish mode as there are quite a number of maps available. While there is a story and a campaign mode, the gameplay does seem largely the same and hence, at the time, I simply played whatever was easiest. Personally, my favourite creature in the game is the Hydra. It is a super slow, super tanky type of unit with the ability to attack all creatures around it. Casting haste on the Hydra increased its movement speed, meaning that it would become a real terror. I also recall playing this game with my sister and my cousin under multiplayer hot seat. Since it was turn-based, this meant that multiple players could play on the same PC, and those afternoons spent playing HOMM1 are actually a very cherished memory of mine. Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. 
do stay tuned for the next episode for another game from my past. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment if you would like to share your experience with the game. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.